Seth's had a very unique beginning and continues to have that presence as the table where we can all get together to talk. So the beginning really was a crucial thing, and it was setting things up that uh, allowed us to come together and kind of start on some basic things. During the time when there was a lot of controversy about uh, the impact of agriculture on environment, there was a group of faculty that really were very interested in trying to apply ecological principles to the practice of agriculture. We're, we're in part sort of responding to a larger outcry from the citizenry about wanting to have agriculture in North Carolina be more environmentally responsible. How do we bring a system together where stakeholders can come together and problem solve in a very respectable and very intentional way? This is when the questions began to emerge that set the stage for um, the creation of CEFs, the Center for Environmental Farming Systems. There was growth among the farming community to a number of farmers who had been kind of low scale moving to commercial scale. Uh, certainly there was a growth in the market for organic and sustainable. North Carolina with small farms being most of the farms and us trying to think about the economic and production social well-being of farms. So it was in that space that SEFS was born, in that, if you will, perfect storm. One of the things that we were really looking for in it was there was no place where sort of large-scale organic and sustainable research was being done. No one location had been dedicated to really show sustainability and these type things in agriculture. So I kept going back to Paul and um, saying, you know, we need a farm, we need a place we can do research. This was a place to be able to go and see a lot of the practices and things that would impact sustainable agriculture at a production scale. A facility for the ability to do research and demonstrations, particularly long-term research. And we went down to Goldsboro. And we looked at it and it was like, okay, this, this has real possibilities. The farm in Goldsboro, just outside of Goldsboro, North Carolina, was a, a one of the existing state farms that were associated with a, a state institution. Having the acreage there, livestock in two or three different areas there, it just seemed we had, it offered more um, a variety of uh, issues that could be looked at. And so after we finally settled on the land, the location, then we had to sort and work through what were the going to be sort of the guiding principles and what this center would do. We took players from NCDA, NC State, uh, A&T, the growers themselves, not always agreeing on everything, but we, the thing is we agreed on the final destination. How do you design a large-scale experiment? People had all kind of ideas about how to go about doing this, so uh, it was a whole series of meetings. It probably took ha a year and a half or so. I think what I remember the most was the excitement that everyone had of something new, something different. Researchers particularly were saying, wow, I'd love to really look at this soil issue, or I'd like to look at trees or whatever it was. And so from the beginning, it was really a diverse group of stakeholders, not just university folks. Well, the best memories I have about CEFs really has to do with the people that I was involved with. We had some production people in, in horticultural crops. We had uh, people like myself, a little bit of economics. We had the communications to engage with community in a responsible and uh, responsive way. Uh, community voices and all of that kind of program. The role of nonprofits in the establishment of CEFs was critical in that it brought in people outside of the university. I think for the very first time, you had nonprofits, community based organizations coming together with some very powerful uh, players. All of these nonprofits brought different voices to the table. 
and then connected in with the, the land-grant universities and the Department of Agriculture. All of these entities are represented itself and people have that opportunity to see this. And I think because from its inception, there was this block of land carved out, dedicated, and these principles and practices put in place, I think this has made it one of the marquee places of sustainable agriculture in the Southeast. I was present at the announcement in 1994 uh, when they had a, a press conference, they had several speakers, uh, they had a bus tour of the facility, and it was like, wow, it's actually going to happen. Uh, it was finally here, and everybody's dreams had come to fruition. On the day of the announcement, Commissioner Jim Graham said, uh, he or she who plants thorns can never get roses. We're planting roses today. And I thought, how wonderful that was to talk about the, what was being planted that day as the Center for Environmental Farming Systems.